I want to get real practical with you today and uh, encourage you to write your book already. You know, if you've got a book on the inside of you, an idea for a story or an idea for some kind of helpful non-fiction book, I want to just share with you five keys to get you striking the keys and finally finish your book. You know, there really are very few things that are as satisfying as reaching the end and then uh, taking what you previously had hidden on the inside and making it public for other people to be blessed by, to learn from, to benefit from. Writing a book really is um, a great way to build and develop a very, very rich, creative legacy. I was um, just reading yesterday about one of my favorite writers, E.M. Bounds. He wrote some of the most influential books on fervent prayer ever in all of history. His books are like, uh, I mean, on, honestly, they are incendiary. But I read um, yesterday that only two of his books actually got published while he was alive. And it was after his death that the rest of the library of amazing writing that he had actually was gathered together and made available to the world. Uh, that guy is making an impact today in hundreds of thousands of lives because he put the words that were in his heart on the paper. And I encourage you to do the same. I also encourage you to do it um, like now because we have opportunities that Mr. E.M. Bounds did not have. And uh, like, do it before you die. Come on, write your book already. You know, and, and what I want to share with you are just a few keys that I have found helpful. It's how I work. So uh, I've written many books and published even more. So I would love to just share with you some things that I, I believe might be helpful to kick the wheels into gear and um, get your book written and out to the world where it belongs. And the first thing I want to encourage you is don't come to your book thinking, I've got to write this huge long book and see it like a mountain that you've got to scale. You know, way off in the distance, you can see the peak, you know. Don't write your book, build your book. You know, that's my advice, whether it's a story you're weaving or a non-fiction book you're conceiving, kiss your reader and kill your excuses. And by kiss, I mean not Keep it simple, stupid, because this is not the stupid way to approach this. This is actually a way that will take you from <laughs> once upon a time to happily ever after without any kind of big uh, roadblocks in the way. And this is it. Keep it short and simple. Yeah, Many people have a book rumbling around in their belly. They're pregnant with something that they want to bring to the world and bring to life. But it feels more like indigestion. You know, it's it's just like this thing that just you think, oh, I should write a book or one day I will write a book. Honestly, a perpetual pregnancy would be a nightmare. You know, there comes a point where what you have there growing on the inside really does need to come out. And let, <laughs> let me give you some keys to help you do that. You know, I want to encourage you today that the idea that you have in the womb of your imagination is not some big monster to be feared, but it's a little embryo. It's an idea that will grow naturally and find its way into the world if you only give some time, attention and nourishment to it, you know, just tend it well. Here are five simple steps. OK, and I realize that we're just going to skim the surface here. Um, I do have some recommendations of courses that you can uh, jump into if you uh, want to take this a step further and really make it a reality. But even what I share here, I believe, is going to be helpful to you. Number one, don't try to write an epic. Now, you, you are obviously welcome to go all Tolkien on me and create uh, an entire world, you know, and, and write, you know, 3,000 pages of 
uh, epic, amazing, awesome fantasy. Um, and if that's your thing, I don't want to dissuade you. But for most of us, the idea of uh, like 100,000 words is a horrifying mountain to climb. And I found that, I, I, as I've already mentioned, I like short, I like sweet, I like simple. Um, because short, sweet and simple does tend to get written and also get read. The way that people consume content nowadays it's very different. You know, short is the new long. Short books are easier to write and easier to read. And they actually get finished both by the writer and by the reader. And so what I would suggest, you know, is if you're going to scale this book writing mountain, just chop it down to size. You know, break it up into rocks, you know, rocks that you can hold in your hand. You know, a decent book or a story can be as little as 10,000 words and still make a massive difference in people's lives. So, you know, carve that 100,000 word tome into 10 and create 10, 10,000 word books instead. I mean, that's just one avenue to go down. And then if you want to, you can then gather those books into a box set of some kind and put it out and repurpose um, and publish again. Um, you're going to be able to knock over those pins a lot easier if you do them one by one. Um, you know, and, and as I say, people do consume in a very different way to, uh, today. You know, they, they are more open to short form content than ever before. And the way that uh, a lot of books now are uh, consumed digitally make that even more of a uh, kind of present truth. Because, uh, you know, it's, uh, there's something about reading on a device. It's different than reading on paper. And of course, when you publish a book, you can do both digital and print. Um, but uh, yeah, just the general way in which people consume content has changed. So don't be fearful to write short. Now, for a fiction writer, why not create a series of short stories? 10,000 words, maybe even less. For a nonfiction writer, stick to one big idea and don't stray from that path. Don't stray from that idea. And that leads me to the next point, number two, your one big idea. I think a mistake a lot of people make is to try and stuff everything into one tome, into one book. Instead of concentrating their effort, efforts to shoot just one arrow and really hit the mark, they shoot in all directions and try and tell everything that they know in one book. You know, this may be good if you want to create some kind of market leading, never equaled classic. But in all honesty, those are few and far between. You know, I encourage writers that I work with and especially ones who are stalled or caught in the headlights wondering what to do to just choose one big idea. You know, consider this idea a bit like a cut diamond. Every chapter you write will highlight one facet of your big idea. One diamond with many facets, not many diamonds, if you know what I mean. You know, you come at your subject and you've got your one big idea, let's say it's prayer, and then take, uh, and I choose prayer because that's what I largely write about, and then you take the facets of that beautiful jewel and you hit um, each one of them one by one. You highlight each one of them one by one. You know, and, and each chapter, as I say, will highlight one facet of your big idea, one diamond with many facets. In fiction, uh, obviously, that may be a little different, but not completely. You know, fiction is story, essentially, and story has a purpose. The purpose is to carry the reader to a satisfying ending. That's what a re fiction reader is looking for. And so you've got to ask yourself, when you're writing the story and, and plotting out the story, does this idea or plot point further the story? Does it move the story forward or is it irrelevant and not required? You know, jumping down a lot of uh, uber descriptive rabbit holes can not really work against you. You know, what you want to do is just keep that story real tight and make every single point and facet of your writing move the story forward, especially if you're writing short stories. 
for nonfiction, you know, drill down into your chosen subject. Every chapter should highlight a specific aspect of your big idea, but at the same time, clearly connect to the whole. You know, it, look at it like the reader, as they go from chapter to chapter, is turning the diamond in their hand as they read. And by the time they turn the last page, they should have a fuller appreciation of the beauty of the complete jewel that you've shared with them. You know, the one big idea really is the foundation upon which you build. Think of a foundation in a house. You know, this is the big idea. That's the that's the slab in the floor. Yeah, that you're actually is actually going to hold the house in place. That's what's going to keep everything in its proper place. You know, and and so sitting at the desk with a keyboard shaming you for the twenty thousand or fifty thousand words you haven't yet written is not a great way to stay motivated. And so instead of looking at your book like a mountain to scale, carve it down to small 500 word rocks and knock those 500 words out each and every day. Some days may be more, but always your 500. I've got a great friend, Marcus Arden, who is exercising this very principle and has been exercising it over the past month. And it's just been so inspiring to see him jumping into the Christian Creative Academy Facebook group saying he's knocked down another another pin, you know, he's knocked out another article, he's knocked out another chapter. Um, and, and so this kind of creative habit really is uh, very, very pivotal and very powerful to take you to that finished tape. And in 30 days, if you do 500 words a day, you'll have 15,000 words. That's a book. That, that, you know, that's a book. You could do one of those every single month if you really gave, gave yourself to it. You know, build the book chapter by chapter, plot point by plot point. Don't excuse yourself because you don't feel inspired. Now, I love uh, this quote by William Faulkner. At least that's who it's often attributed to. And he said, I only write when inspiration strikes. Fortunately, it strikes at nine every morning. You know, just keep placing one brick on top of the other until the whole book is built. Number four, do not edit while you write. You know, the editor in you is a critic, not a creative. He or she is going to crack. I'm talking about the inner critic. I'm talking about self-editing. This is not a comment on editors, if you like. I work with editors all the time, and I am hugely thankful for the skill that they bring to my table. But if you are sitting down to write a book, don't wear both caps at once. You know, that inner critic, that inner editor is going to cramp your style and cripple your voice. Just lock the temptation to edit as you write in a dark room somewhere at the uh, uh, <laughs> in another room in the house. And if possible, way down at the end of the garden somewhere out of sight, out of mind, out of hearing range. Yeah. And that way you'll be free. Yeah. To write from your heart without worrying about whether the words are perfectly constructed or spelled or whatever. I mean, I, I my, my number one writing skill is typos. You know, you just ask anyone who's worked with me. I, I'm like, I, I'm like the fumbling keyboard hero, you know, but I can't afford to worry about that while I'm actually getting the words on the page. You know, when the right time comes, you let the editor out of their kennel, the, that inner editor, like, again, I don't want to, uh, I'm talking about that inner critic and come back to your work afterwards and go through with a critical eye, but not when you're first putting the words on the page. And it's really difficult to allow a painterly wordsmith and a pernickety inner critic. Is pernickety a word? <laughs> I think it is. It certainly, it certainly kind of sums up how the, the, the inner editor will work. It's going to pick up on every little thing. And you don't want that as you're kind of working and looking to step into flow. You know, don't let them loose on the, uh, on the page at the same time. Give them their allotted turn at the right time. Write first, edit afterwards. And as you're writing, don't judge your writing. Don't second guess. 
We don't return and spin every sentence to perfection. Get real and raw and punch the keys with heart and soul. The Bible says that issue that life issues from the heart and you really want your words to be filled with vitality. Yeah. Then bring your head to the game. You know, you put your heart on the page, then bring your head to the game and shape that raw material into something more pithy. And by pithy, I mean, get rid of the flab, get rid of anything that is not necessary, not needed to make it really punchy. And so it really hits the mark. Working together in tandem at their allotted time, never together, the writer in you and the critical editor in you are a very, very formidable team. And then, of course, um, you can then take that to someone else to uh, cast a an expert eye over it on your behalf and do an edit outside of kind of that self production. And then number five, and this kind of sums things up, but it's an important one because there are lots of books that have been written and never finished or never published. You know, a thorough edit, when you finish, here we go, when you finish, finish. I should put an exclamation mark there. You know, a thorough edit is important, absolutely, but left alone for too long you know, that that inner critic's going to whittle your book, book down to just a few sentences, you know, perfected sentences. You know, your 10,000 word uh, short story is going to become like a 2,000 word castrated cat. You know, it's just, it just doesn't work. You don't want to whittle your thing down to just a matchstick. Don't be too violent in your critical appraisal of the work that you produce. Yeah. I recommend that you do your edit in three phases. Yeah. Um, number one, high touch. And the high touch edit is really just asking, does this flow? Does the book cover the one big idea well? Or does it tell the story well? Does it leave the reader satisfied that the promise on the cover has been fulfilled? Is there any glaring omissions that must be added? And are there any kind of Frankenstein limbs growing that need to be lopped off? And by that, I mean, you know, all the flabby stuff that's really not needed. Just get rid of it. You know, it's a great thing to just chop off things that are not required. Yeah. If they don't move the story forward or don't add value or if they don't relate directly to the big idea that you are opening up for your readers in a non-fiction book. And then the mid-touch edit is where you move through the manuscript to tidy the sentences, clear ideas so that they really sparkle, add finishing touches to the prose that you've written. Now in, in this, it's um, really with the mid-touch edit, you're, you're coming in and doing a more broad stroke edit. You're getting more detailed, but you're just looking and thinking, have I made this point really, really clear? Are there ways in which I can either expand or contract the way I've said it to make it hit the mark more powerfully? And then, of course, the, what I call a low touch edit. And this is when you go, go down into the thick grass of grammar and typos and tidy the details on a very practical level to make the book the best it can be. You know, a lot of that work can be done just with a simple spell check, believe it or not. Um, it, and, and there are softwares like Pro Writing Aid and Grammarly and other softwares that can do a lot of that work on your behalf, even prompt you how your writing can be improved. Um, and, and believe me, even after all of these kind of layers of editing, your book is never going to be perfect. It really is not. You're going to find that some mistakes are going to slip, even the finest net. So you've got to come to a point where you're happy and content with good enough is good enough and getting better every day. And actually just allow that book to sprout wings and fly out into the world in all of its glorious imperfection. 
You know, if necessary, and I would recommend this, get someone else to do an edit for you after you have completed your round of editing. Get a qualified friend or jump on fiverr.com or upwork.com and hire some talent to give your tidy manuscript a once over. You know, book writing is really, for me anyways, and, and, you know, again, I can only talk from my experience and my perspective, but book writing for me is journey sharing. It's really creative legacy building. You know, just know that this book that you're writing now may well, and I hope not, is not going to be the last book that you write. You know, that way you'll see it as a stepping stone to the best you can bring and be actually willing to release it into the wide world so that it can actually do some good. As long as you're waiting for it to be perfect, as long as you're thinking that I can't put this out yet because it's not yet fully completed, fully perfect in every aspect, um, you, you may end up like most books, I would uh, fear to say, just stuck on a hard drive somewhere, never actually finding the, 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 the very thing it was created for, which is someone's eyeballs reading it. You know, better off to put something out there that is going to potentially help and bless and build and benefit and entertain someone else than keep it hidden on your hard drive waiting for some uh, kind of elusive day of perfection. And, uh, and, and if you need some help writing your book, and now I've got a couple of courses that I, I think can help you if you're struggling to get your book written. Uh, one of them's for nonfiction. The other covers building a book based on the famous hero's journey framework for fiction. Um, uh, I've got the nonfiction book writing roadmap, okay, um, which walks you through the whole process of the big idea of building your book um, concept in great detail. Um, and I know that this has helped a lot of people kind of get over all of those roadblocks that have stood in their way and take them from kind of blank page to published and selling in the Amazon store for their nonfiction book. And then I've got another um, uh, another course that I worked with a tremendous book coach called Bonnie Johnston called the Inspirational Fiction Hero's Journey Bootcamp. Um, you can find both the links to both of these. If you go to um, my website, davidleemartin.com, click on the link to the blog. OK, so that's davidleemartin.com forward slash latest. Yeah, um, you'll see my latest posts and there'll be one there called Write Your Book Already. Five keys to get you striking the keys and finally finish your book. Yeah, if you do that, if you go there and click through to that um, article, you'll find some links to the nonfiction book writing roadmap and the hero's journey course. Um, it's uh, the actual the nonfiction book writing roadmap is davidleemartin.net. OK, uh, if you want to go there directly uh, after this podcast, davidleemartin.net forward slash courses forward slash non dash fiction dash book dash writing dash roadmap oh that's so horrible and um the hero's journey okay is davidleemartin.net forward slash heroes h-e-r-o-s dash journey dash boot camp hey god bless you hopefully these have been some helpful pointers and uh yeah Go write your book already. Well, thanks for listening. Hopefully uh, it's been an encouragement to you today. If you want to connect any further, you can do so through my website at davidleemartin.com. Have a great day.